Hi. Um, with the instrumental variable, we made these four assumptions. We set up uh, the potential outcome framework and we imposed these four assumptions. Then what can we identify? How can we estimate some kind of parameter? Uh, the answer is local average primitive fact. So first, you have to estimate, uh, we called, uh, you have to calculate expected value of y, uh, uh, excuse me, expected value of y conditional on z So it is the intent to treatment estimator and you have to divide it by the probability of uh, probability of the, the difference in propensity score, uh, the probability of taking treatment uh, affected by the instrument. So this is what you have to calculate. Huh? This is called the wild estimator, and it is it is the same as the uh, OLS coefficient from the regression of y on d using z as iv. So on where d is binary and binary instrument. So this is the wild estimator. We call this the wild estimator with uh, binary treatment and binary instrument. And what is interesting here is under the assumptions, uh, the wild estimator equals to, so let's, let me write it as gamma. The wild estimator equals to Compliers. This is very interesting. So it is expected treatment effect, but it is expected treatment effect for the compliers. The intuition is, um, I'm not going to derive the proof, but the intuition is pretty clear. So uh, the intuition on uh, never takers and always takers and never takers and never takers do not change their uh, selection decision. So they do not provide any information uh, by the randomization of Z. So they do not change the decision no matter what, uh, by uh, no matter what Z is. So randomization in Z does not, does not extract any information from them. So they do not provide any information about, uh, like from the randomization of Z. And, but compliers do comply, follow the randomization of Z. So we can extract information only from them. Defiers, um, defiers, if exist, if exist, uh, cancel out, cancel out the randomization of Z. So when you randomize Z, compliers follow that. So when you are invited, you attend, and when you are not invited, you don't. So it's nice. Compliers make, if everyone is complier, then randomization equals to treatment. So it would be perfect randomization. However, defiers causes defiers cause problems because they are moving the other way. It looks like, so in an extreme case, suppose that 10% of populations, 10% uh, of the population is compliers and 10% of the population is defiers. Then when you switch between two instruments, uh, the instrumental variable, invited or not, uh, some people change their decisions, like compliers change the decision, but this decision is canceled exactly by the defiers. So it looked like no one is 
uh, changing their decision due to the instrument. So defiers cancel out the effect of compliers. So it contaminates the, the parameter, the, the causal inference. It, it's, it's not working well with the randomization in D. So uh, because of this, we can only identify the compliers when, when, when the instrument is not, uh, when, when the treatment, treatment is heterogeneous and when the treatment effect, treatment is endogenous. So treatment effect is heterogeneous and treatment itself is uh, endogenous. Uh, it is a very interesting, interesting result. So you have to think about this. Then let me compare, let me uh, explain. So I, excuse me, it, the math mathematical derivation is not that difficult, but I'm going to skip here uh, some issues. The problem here is um, different instrumental variable imply different compliers. For example, if you suppose that there are two instruments, one is say uh, email invitation and the other is uh, say post mail invitation, letter invitation. So for example, if you are more, more like if you check emails much more carefully, then uh, you may be complier according to the email email invitation to the email invitation. But if you throw away all the letters, you are not interested, then you are not going to read letter invitations. Then the letter invitation instrument may not work with you, uh, may, not, may, not, may not have any effect on you. So in that case, you are not a complier. So different instrumental variables imply different compliers. Uh, and for example, compare invitation versus versus say an incentive or incentive or uh, say $1,000 incentive. So there are, suppose that you are doing two different randomizations. First, you are just sending out an invitation to the job training program. Just send out letters or emails. Uh, and uh, another option is sending out randomly to randomly chosen people, send out $1,000 invitations. That means if you, if you are invited to the job training program, and if you finish, if you complete the program, then I'm going to give you $1,000. You are going to receive $1,000. And then, then you can, it's clear that obviously more people will be affected by the letter invitation, incentive, a rare instrument. So both are instruments. So the compliers, uh, the probability of the fraction of compliers, it's much larger for the letter instrument. So when you compare these two, you can say that $1,000 incentive is a better instrument. Uh, first, they're, uh, so their compliers are different and the letter instrument is better because uh, it induces a larger complier group. So we can learn two things. Compliers are different if you use different instrument and uh, the larger the complier group is, then the better your analysis is. You are studying a larger population, so the instrument will be better. And the problem here is then, <clears throat> By the way, the problem is it, you don't know, you cannot, you do not observe who the, the, the hidden types of uh, individuals. There are three types. So if you assume that t do not exist, there are three types, always takers, never takers, and compliers. It's just another imaginary hypothetical setup, but imagine it, it does not, it is not observed from your data. From your data, what you see is uh, the randomization result, the instrument, and the realized decision and the realized outcome. From that, from there, you cannot tell who is who, who is what type. So in still, you can say something. So the treated consists of 
always takers. And um, so there are two types, always takers and invited uh, compliers. And consists of those who do not participate in the program consists of never takers and not invited compliers. So you can um, you can imagine what's going on. So in the in in among the treated, some are invited and uh, only, but but some some of the always takers could be invited. So you have to be careful. But the difference main difference here is you can calculate the probability of compliers. You don't know who is who, but you can calculate the probability how many of the individuals are compliers. It is by buyers can be written as probability of d equals to one. Probability d equals to one. Given c. So this shows that this is the probability of participation. Probability of participation among invited, among not invited. So like this shows the difference shows that the effect of invitation by by increasing the invitation uh, like by in, by inviting someone the probability of participation increased that is exactly the compliers only compliers make chain uh, uh, only compliers changes their decision by the instrument so the difference uh, due to the instrument captures the probability of compliers uh, that's another interesting uh, issue here of uh, property here. And uh, interpretation is, the major problem here is interpretation is tricky because compliers is not observed. Compliers are not observed. And uh, it is just purely theoretical uh, and randomization the result of randomization and it's nothing to do with anything in the real world. So if you change the instrument, the compliers change, then how can we interpret? Then I will give you some examples where compliers might be uh, of interest. The first example is partial compliance. The partial compliance is if you are not invited you cannot attend uh, the program. It's partial compliance. Or uh, nearly, it's very few people, very few people participated the program without invitation. In our example, only 2% of participants did not have invitation. So this partial compliance is nearly satisfied. 98% or more than nine, only less than less than 2% of participants did not have invitation. So you may assume that nearly the same, uh, nearly, nearly partial compliance, which means that if you do not have invitation, you are, you are not going to attend the program. It's, it's nearly satisfied. Then the uh, traded, there are then, there is, no always takers. If you, so always takers are defined by those who attend the program, no matter what the invitation is. However, if, if this is true, if you're invited, then you cannot attend the program, then you're, you cannot be, you cannot be an always taker, right? So thus the treated is only invited compliers in our example. So let me write it as in our example. So the compliers uh, take more than 98% of the treated. Thus the, the average treatment effect for compliers is uh, nearly, can be understood as 
it can be it would be is very similar to the average treatment effect for the treated treatment on the treated so you may interpret the local average treatment effect this is the local average treatment effect local average treatment effect is average treatment effect for compliers equals to the average treatment effect for the treated therefore uh, you you can see, uh, and if you are interested, if your parameter of interest is treatment effect on the treated, then local average treatment effect can approximate that. And another way to, to interpret the compliers is using marginal group. So marginal group is uh, uh, those who, who are on the margin of participation. If, if you make a small change, they are going to change their decision. So that there are first, they are first group, there are, so those are the first group affected by a small change. So, like we are studying the marginal group because they are on the border. If you reduce the subsidy, if you reduce the, the incentive or the program, then they are the first ones who leave the program. But if you extend the program, the marginal group is the first people who are going to attend the program. So, and in, in many policymaking decisions, those marginal groups are important. And compliers are, if complier group, Compliers, complier group is a small fraction. We may interpret them as uh, as the marginal group. So those who are attending the program by an invitation means that even without any incentive, just by invitation, they are coming to the program. That means if the government advertises the 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 training program more actively, then you can include them uh, directly, like at the first on the first hand. So, so you have to study if uh, advertising advertisement is effective or not by looking at those marginal group. And the marginal group is the complier in our analysis because they are coming to uh, the program by a small invitation. Short invitation can uh, do the same thing. And um, okay, we are we are now the next topic is to consider two stage least squares, two stage least squares with uh, multiple IVs. We are going to think about this problem. Uh, so far, uh, our setup was only for binary instrument but it does not allow continuous instrument or multiple instruments. In that case, uh, the potential outcome framework does not work or it, it would be too much complicated. Uh, so we have to, we have to think about multiple instrumental variables to, uh, 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 when you have multiple instrumental variables, we have to think about two stage list squares. So the potential outcome framework above and uh, cannot accommodate more than two, more than binary instrument. It only accommodates binary instruments. So when you have multiple instruments, you have to use the two stage, two stage list squares or GMM methods. Uh, the, the IV regression model, in that case, uh, what is what is the the result? Suppose that to study that. Suppose that there are two binary instrumental variables. I still maintain the binary instrumental assumption, extending that is a little bit more complicated. Consider two binary instrumental variables, and uh, suppose that you get suppose that uh, say Delta one is the local average 
pretty much a uh, local average treatment effect late from induced by Z1i. And delta 2 is the late induced by Z2i. So delta 1 and delta 2 are the local average treatment effect for the compliers induced by the respective uh, instrument. In this case, and let GABA be the uh, GMM or two-stage least squares estimator for the coefficient of D. Then the relationship is gamma is a weighted, another weighted average of weighted average of delta 1 and delta 2. So if you use two stage least squares uh, with multiple, with, with two uh, binary instruments, then you can understand it as a weighted average of the coefficient would be a weighted average of two local average treatment effects where the weight is given by uh, pi 1 covariance between pi 1 covariance between pi ah, see one i. So I will explain what is pi 1 and pi 2. Uh, with uh, and di is pi 1 z1i plus pi 2 z2i plus eta. So this is suppose that this is the first stage regression model. First stage regression in the two stage least squares. If you think about two stage least squares, this is the first stage regression model. Pi 1 is the coefficient of z1, pi 2 is the coefficient of z2. And then uh, the pi one and pi two are the are the the uh, is used in the weight. So more. So actually, the pi also has the same covariance between d and z. And, and you know, it's in, what's interesting here is so the weight is determined by the covariance between d and z. Also, pi one and pi two captures the covariance between this guy and this guy. So, what matters here is so instrumental variable receives more weights if it is more correlated with the treatment. If the instrumental variable has a more co larger correlation, then it will it will be uh, it will be receiving more weights. Okay, uh, let me check. I I'm not sure how much I did. Uh, if I need more time, uh, I think this is the last video. If I need more videos to unload, then I'm going to continue a few more issues related to this. But I guess this will be the last one. Um, uh, thank you for your effort throughout the semester. And uh, I, I enjoyed online teaching. I was happy uh, to, to record my my lecture is online. It was much easier and I could do better, I think. So thank you for listening and good luck with your uh, final exam and stay healthy. See you later.